shoot it, Jacoby. Ready whenever you are. Hey, Henry. The rope you gave us for that last hanging danced that guy up and down like he's on a rubber band. Williams only weighs 134. Adding a couple of pounds for breakfast the way those guys always eat, that brings it up to 136. Keep it up and you'll get the spring out of it. We want this one's neck broke. All right. Hey, what's the idea of throwing things out of the window? Quit playing with that gallon. How do you expect us to do any work? Well, you cut that yelling. I'll get the sheriff after you, bums. <laughs> Ain't much respect for the press around here. How's the wife, had any better? Worse. And me having to hang around all day and all night waiting for him to hang that cuckoo. It's hard work, all right. Crack it for a dime. Hey, Schwartz, what do you do? Why me? What time is it, anyway? 4.30. Say, me too. These cards are like wash rags. Let's chip in and get a new deck. These are good enough for me. I'm 80 cents out already. Favor, 105.9. Hey, take this phone. Ernie, you ain't doing anything. Oh, are you guys crippled or something? Criminal Courts Building, press room. Just a minute, please. Hello, Sarge. McHugh. Yeah, I phoned. Anything doing? All right. Thank you, Sarge. To John. Say, Ernie, why don't you take your instrument into the library and play it? Hello. Is this the home of Mrs. F.D. Margolis? This is Mr. McHugh with the City News Bureau. Is it true, madam, that you were the victim of a peeping Tom? Ask her if she's worth peeping at. Oh, now, madam, that ain't the right attitude to take. All we want is the facts. Tell her I can run up for an hour. Tell her to come over here. We'd like to reenact the crime. <laughs> Just a minute, madam. Is it true, Mrs. Margolis, that you took the part of Pocahontas in the Elks pageant seven years ago? Hello. She hung up. Now, I wonder who was peeping in her teepee. <laughs> yep. No, Hilly Johnson, ain't it? Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Burns. No, Hilly hasn't shown up yet. Hello, Ben Zinger. I just had an interview with Williams over in the death house. That jail, that jail is reeking with germs. Oh, believe me, the Board of Health is going to hear about the sanitary conditions over there through my paper. It's amazing to me that those prisoners can live long enough to be hung. What's the idea, Mac? Say, is that the only telephone in this place? It's the only one with a mouthpiece. How many times have I got to tell you fellas to let my phone alone? You want to talk through a mouthpiece? Go and buy one, like I did. Whitney, 9,000. The germs of the mouth are the most contagious, the most malignant, that practically they're the... Oh, whole... shut up, Listerine. Whitney, 9,000. What is this, a hospital? Yeah, Roy, how's your pimple coming along? Hello, Sarge. McHugh, anything doing? Say, you don't have to use my desk for a garbage can either. Say, how would you like to quit stinking up this place with those antiseptics? Anything new on the hanging, Ben Singer? My deal in it. Hey, Zonai. What is it? Question before the house. Gentleman wants to know if there's anything new on the hanging. Nothing special. Did you talk to the sheriff? Why don't you get your own news? Somebody ought to see the sheriff. Criminal course press room. No, Hilly Johnson ain't. Oh, yes, Mr. Burns. What? I know, Mr. Burns. Yes, Mr. Burns. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Walter Burns for Hildy again. Something must have happened. I'll tell you what's happened. Hildy's quit. Oh, nurse. Hildy? Why, he can't quit. He's a fixture on the Morning Post. Yeah, he goes with the woodwork. Well, he told me he was going to quit. 
Say, listen, Walter Burns wouldn't let him quit. He'll find a way to keep him somehow. Remember what he did to Fenton when he wanted to go to Hollywood? Yeah. Got him into a fight, then had him thrown into jail for assault and battery. Give me a rewrite. Well, if he ain't quit, why ain't he here covering the hangar? I wish I could quit. All right, Mo. Ready? Dr. Irving Zobo. Z for zebra, O for onion, B for baptize, E for anything, L for, uh, L for, uh... Oh, don't tell him, anybody. L for Listerine. With offices at 1608 Inverness Avenue. Well, this bird was arrested tonight on complaint of a lot of angry husbands. They say he's been feeding their wives with electricity at a dollar a crack. <laughs> oh, the electric teaser's in again. I understand he massages them, too. Well, anyway, this doctor's being held for malpractice. And the station house is full of his patients claiming he's innocent. But from what the husbands say, it looks like he's a Lothario. <laughs> All right. Main 6800. <clears throat> Press? No, Mr. Burns. Hildy Johnson. I'm not lying, Mr. Burns. <whistles> Walter acted like he was having a hemorrhage. Find Johnson, sir? No. Then I'll have to put another man on the job. In your hat, Duffy. I'm after that bunch of lily livered, pockmarked peanut politicians who think they're running this town, and Hildy Johnson's the only man on the staff I can trust tonight. But we have to have somebody else. We've there. got to have Johnson. But you haven't got him. Oh, but. I want Hildy Johnson. Please. Tell the boys of the downtown deliveries to find them a fast. Fifty dollars to the man that brings them in. Where's Diamond Louie? Right there. Hey, what's this game? Hold on. Louie! Johnson here? He's on the wagon. Well, I ain't. You remember me? I was here last night with Mr. Bensley. Mr. Bensley's still here. Good. Hello, Louie. Hello, baby. Oh, he's not. You seen Hilda Johnson? I haven't seen that newsie in months. Hello. Hello, baby. Hi, Lizzie. I'm looking for Hildy Johnson. Why? Walter Burns wants to see him. And I want to see Walter Burns. What for? Two dollars. Two dollars, please. Oh, sorry. Well, darling, you're almost mine. <laughs> Honey, I'd write the society notes to get a look at Walter Burns' face when he hears of this. Oh, I'd write him for a year to see him when he hears I'm getting married. <laughs> I'd write him for two years to get a load of what he says when he hears I'm leaving this town for that New York. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, so that's why you got that. Walter Burns. That's why you're going to marry me, Walter Burns. That's why you're going to New York, despite Walter Burns. Oh, honey, you're crazy. Now, listen. Dear, did you ever come up out of a sewer? Listen, honey. Did you ever... Mm. Did you ever come up out of a sewer and have the cool, fresh air hit you? Well, I did. And, honey, you're the cool, fresh air. You've made a fresh air fiend out of me, dear. And I'm not going back there unless you send me. 
Then, Hildy, you go right up to Walter Burns and resign. Well, and have him get his hands on me? That's why I've been hiding out at your place, to keep away from that double-crossing maniac. Tell you what I'll do. I'll resign by phone and I get a look at that snake's face. Oh, no, you don't. Here. What, 500 and then one bill? Uncle sent it to me for a wedding present. I wasn't going to give it to you until we got there. But you take it. And after you take me home, you get the ticket. Instead of getting married tonight, we'll be married tomorrow. Instead of going to New York tomorrow, we'll go to New York tonight. All you have to do is throw the old underwear in the trunk 24 hours earlier, that's all. What is it, Mother? Do you know what I think? What? I think you must be a sort of irresponsible type, or you wouldn't do things this way. Now, Mother, you stop picking on my Hildy. He didn't do one blessed thing to help our getting away. You better get busy. Oh, that's the dress you had on the first night I met you. You're the one I care for. Here. Wait a minute. Is that the dress you had on the night you said no? Come here. Baby, if I only had a camera with me. Full page of pictures. Frightful carnage, snap of the morning post. Holy fire exit to execute hundreds of expose of theater owners. Start of the morning post. City boy to investigate. Oh, what a chance. What a chance. Listen, honey, we're from downtown. Get those tickets. See the mother gets the lawyer. See you later. Hildy. <laughs> Hello, Hildy. I'd like to have a little talk with you for about 15 minutes. Now, not a chance, Walter. I'm busy. Oh, not too busy to be playing around the neighborhood turning in false fire alarms. What? Hello, Mac. Hello, Mr. Burns. All right, Walter. Boy, I wish I could find a guy that did this. I'd make that box his tombstone. Well, aren't you going to ask me how I found out where you were? Yeah, a big scoop with everybody in the county building working for you. Set him up. Not for me. He'll take the same. So you're leaving me for marriage? Why? None of your business. How did it happen? There was a moon. Well, I guess that lets me out. I'll give you a farewell party. Thanks. But it hurts, Hildy, you're not telling a fellow after all I've done for you. You mean after all you've done to me? The time you sent me down to the lake to test that trick diving suit. That suit was about as waterproof as your straw hat. Filled so fast it took him a half an hour to pull me up. It was lucky I only went deaf. Didn't I go to the expense of hiring an airplane to take you up so you'd get your hearing back? To the further expense of bribing the pilot so he landed me in the middle of a strike massacre at Heron, Illinois? You scooped the whole world on the story. You made yourself the envy of every newspaper man alive. Oh, well, it was worth it at that. Even if I did get ridden out of town on a rail. With eight bullet holes and a hat that cost me six bucks. And charge on the expense account at 15. And got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the days. Well, you'll certainly have a lot to tell the kids. Yeah. What kids? You're getting married. 
Well, why not? A guy's got to settle down sometime. Get a home and a wife. And they say it's kids that hold it all together. That's right. I never was big enough to let a nice girl reform me so I could stay in a two-room love nest at nights with the wife and kids while the fellas were out having a lot of fun. Oh, marriage does make a respectable citizen out of a man, and it must be grand. You never have to worry about a place to go. You always know where you're going. Home. None of this idiotic jumping around at all hours and having to be on the inside of all the crazy excitement in this town. Ah, oh, dear. The 515 out to some quiet suburb. A home-cooked dinner every night at exactly seven. And by ten in bed. Unless after the tapioca, the wife has some friends in for a neighborly chat. I don't blame you, Hilly. It sounds great. Excuse me a minute, will you? <laughs> Come on, Schwartzy boy, deal him out, deal him out. Don't let that deck get cold. See if you can deal me a decent hand this time. Hello, wooden shoes. Any news? I just been over to the death house. Did you hear what Williams said to the priest? Oh, forget it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The paper's full of the hanging. We ain't got room for the ads. What did Williams say? He said that he. What do you do, boy? Say, come on, Andy up. Andy up. I've had him twice already. He said to the priest that he was innocent. He'll start crying in a minute. Why don't you send the poor nuts some roses like that girl of his, Molly Malloy? Oh, now there, there's an idea. Yeah, you know, she thinks she's innocent, too. Oh, you, you fellas don't understand. Now, Before I you go on, to... wooden shoes, would you mind running down the corner and getting me a hamburger sandwich? Bet two. Three cards. Personally, my feeling Make is... Make that two hamburgers like a good fellow. Now, my feeling is... Yeah. ...that Williams is of the dual personality type. Yeah, I know, I know. Like the Dolly sisters. Well, I... Yeah, that's right. Tell it to the Tribune. I'll raise you. I'll raise you. What do you do? It's uh, on account of the way his head is shaped. It's a typical case. Sure. Ask him to put a lot of ketchup on them sandwiches. That beats me. I thought you fellas might be interested in the psychological end. Make mine plain lettuce on gluten bread. Get me a sandwich, too, wooden shoes. First one I got tonight. What do you got? <clears throat> Where? Where am I going to get the dough for all these eats? Oh, charge it. You got a badge, haven't you? What's that good for? Four hamburgers. And a lettuce. On gluten. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Burns. Why, no, we haven't seen Hildy. Hi, slave. What are you been? He's got to shave. It's Walter Burns on the wire. Talk to him, will you, Hildy? Tell that paranoid to take a sweet kiss for himself. Come on, Ernie, sound your age. Goodbye forever. Listen, Hilly, will you do me a personal favor and talk to Walter? He's called up about nine million times. What's the matter, Hilly? Are you afraid of him? I'll talk to that maniac with pleasure. Hello, Mr. Burns. What's that, Mr. Burns? Why, your language is shocking, Mr. Burns. Say, listen, you crazy baboon. Get a pencil and paper and take this down and get it straight, because it's important. It's the Hildy Johnson curse. The next time I see you, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I'm going to walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. Ouch. Oh, That's telling them. Listen. No, I ain't going to cover the hanging. I wouldn't cover Washington Cross in the Delaware for you if he did it all over again. Never mind the Vaseline, Jocko. It won't do you any good this time, because I'm going to New York. I didn't tell you that, did I? And if you know what's good for you, you'll stay west of Gary, Indiana, because the Johnson never forgets. And that, boys, is what is known as telling the managing editor. Well, why'd you quit? I'm getting married. What? You see those three to New York tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir. What do you mean, three? Me and my girl and her darling ma. Oh, look, he's in love. So it's see what things. Is she a white girl? Has she got a good shape? Does Walter know you're getting married? Does he know? Shook hands like a pal, offered to throw me a farewell dinner. That's his favorite joke. Farewell dinner. He poisons people at him. Give me Tucker 2164, will you? 
Yeah, he got me into Polak Mike's filled me full of rot gun. I'd have been there yet if I hadn't been with the toilet. You imagine that guy trying to break up my marriage after shaking hands? Hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? Hmm? Oh, I know, but... Oh, you bet I resigned. Right in his face, didn't I? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eleven eighteen tonight, yeah. No. Why, the press room. Just dropped in to say goodbye to the boys, yeah. Not a chance, honey. I got a taxi waiting. Yeah. Ten minutes. Bye-bye, honey. Hey, where's the wedding? It's in New York, so you guys ain't gonna have any fun with it. No fake warrants are kidnapping the bride with me. Everybody's getting this New York bug. It's a rube town for mine. You want to look out, Hildy? They tell me all those New York reporters are Lizzie's. Remember that one from New York last summer? With a toy bee? <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there was a man. Boys, listen. Could any of you gentlemen tell me where the telegraph station is? <laughs> you want to look out, Hilda, you'll be talking like that. Which one of those city journals are you going to work for? None of them. Who wants to work on the newspaper? Not a whole boat's full of dandruff and bumps in. They wait off of all of them. What are you going in for? The movie? The advertising business. 150 smackers a week. What? 150 what? Well, there's the contract. Have you guys got anything better to do down there? It is 150. You're gonna miss a sweet hanging. I'm not interested. He's going to write poetry about my lady's drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine punching a time clock, sitting around with a lot of stuffed shirts, talking statistics? <laughs> Why, you'd be like a fire horse tied to a milk wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to who's talking. Journalists, peeking through keyholes, running after fire engines like a lot of coach dogs, waking people up in the middle of the night to ask them what they think of Mussolini, stealing pictures off of old ladies of their daughters that get attacked in Grove Park. A lot of daffies let in keep swelling around with holes in their pants, borrowing nickels from office boys, and for what? To a million hired girls and motorman's wives don't know what's going on. Yeah, your girl must have handed you that line. I don't need anybody to tell me about newspapers. I've been a newspaper man for 15 years, a cross between a bootlegger and a galooper. And if you want to know something, you'll all end up on the copy desk, gray-headed, humpback, slob, dodging kind of sheets when you're 90. You'll be out on the street the minute your contract's up. Oh, no, not me. My girl's uncle owns the business. Has he got a lot of jack? Choking him. What do you think he'd give us for a wedding present? A dozen doilies. <laughs> $500 in cash. There ain't 500 in cash. There it is, except what it costs to get those tickets to New York. Let me count that. Oh, no, you don't. Boys, boys, just a minute, please. What about a little bite? Scram. Jenny. Oh, there you hey, go. Can I wash up now, please? Yes. This place is beginning to smell like a like an owl's foot. <laughs> Come on, Jenny. You don't want to wash up on a night like this. I'm going away. This is a holiday. Come on, give us a kiss. You will eat up and you keep away from me. Oh, what's the matter? Ain't I your fun anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jenny, I'll tell you what we'll do. You and I will go around and say goodbye to everybody in the building. Oh, but we can't take this with us. Come on, Jenny. Come on. Hey! Look! Come on, Jenny. Walk me around again, Jenny. Around, around again. Walk me around again, Jenny. Hey. Around, around again. Walk me around again, Look here, fellas. Hi, Sheriff. Any news? Who jumped out of this window? We promised not to tell. Who threw it? Judge Mankiewicz threw it. He was in it with his robes on, playing fireman. <laughs> Come on now, fellas. I know who it was. It was Hilda Johnson, wasn't it? Where is he? Out with a lady. I swear I don't know what to do with you boys. I have a darn good mind to take this press room away from you. Damn it! <laughs> Wouldn't that be too bad? The place is so full of cockroaches you can't walk. Personally, I don't give two hoots. But how do you suppose it looks to have a lot of hoodlums yelling and throwing things out of the window? Besides, there's someone in that death house. How do you suppose he feels listening to all this revelry? A lot you care how he feels. We're doing everything possible to... To get your whole ticket re-elected next week. Yes, when Williams drops through that trap tomorrow, it means a million votes. Can we help it if the people rise to support this administration stand against the Red Menace? Personified by Mr. Earl Williams, the guy who loses the job he's held for 14 years. 
joins a parade of the unemployed, and because he's goofy from lack of food, waves a red undershirt. Williams is a dangerous radical, and he killed a policeman. Williams is a poor bird who had the tough luck to kill a colored policeman in a town where the colored vote counts. And they're hanging Danny Deaver in the morning. You! Keep your shirt on, Pinky. And I don't want to hear any more of that Pinky stuff. I got a name, see? Peter B. Hartman. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Stop it! Pink, how's that look to the voters? Like I had sore eyes or something. Just a minute, fellas. Just a minute. Now, Pete, how about the favor that uh, certain party is asking? Once and for all, will you hang this person at 5 a.m. instead of 7? It can't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Roy, you can't hang a fellow in his sleep just to please the newspaper. No, but you can keep postponing the hanging so it'll come just before the election. Yes. With this new alienist coming in, how do we know there'll be a hanging? Yes. What if this professor finds he's insane or something? Yes. He won't find he's insane. No? No, because he ain't. William is as sane as I am. Saner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, here's a resume of the situation. The newspapers have got to put their shoulders to the wheel. What do you do, Jim? They've got to impress on these Bolsheviks that a death warrant for Earl Williams is a death warrant for every bomb thrown on American red in this town. This hanging means more to the people of this fair city today. That's a statement, Jimmy. Why don't you go home? All right, you'll just get scooped. We're going to reform the Reds with a rope. That's our slogan. You can quote me if you want to. Sheriff Hartman oh, pledges... Oh, Peoria, we've been printing this chestnut for weeks. Ain't you going to use that? Sure. <laughs> Give me the desk. This is Bensinger. The sheriff refuses to move the hanging up one minute. No, I won't. That hanging's coming off exactly as per schedule. Seven o'clock in the morning, and not a minute sooner. There's such a thing as being humane, you know. All right, all right. Just wait till you want a favor. Give me a rewrite. in the morning. <laughs> Boy. Jake, you lead on the hanging. And don't use Hartman's name in this at all. Just say the sheriff. Why can't they jerk these guys at a reasonable hour so we can get some sleep? This new alien is Dr. Max J. Uh, Egelhofer. That's right, from Vienna. He's going to examine Williams at the request of the uh, United Federation for World Betterment. Oh, my, one of the biggest. Author of that book, The Personality Gland. And where to put it? Not a dime. Just autographed a copy for me. Did he bite his initials in your pants, too? Wait. There's more. That doctor's the 14th pair of whiskers they've sent in on this case. Those alienists make me sick. All they do is tickle you, then send you a bill for 500 bucks. Give me the desk. Now, here's the situation on the eve of the hanging. Hello, this is Murphy. More slop on the hanging. A double guard has been thrown around the jail, the municipal buildings, railroad terminals, and elevated stations to prepare for the expected general uprising of radicals at the hour of execution. Ready? Sheriff Hartman's just put four more hundred relatives on the payroll to protect the city against the Red Menace, which is leaving Moscow in a couple of minutes. Up a dime. Sheriff Hartman, uh, the sheriff, has just received four more letters threatening his life, which he's going to answer by a series of raids. And to prove to the voters that the Red Menace is on the square, Sheriff Hartman has just written himself four more letters threatening his life. Yes, yes, I know he wrote them on account of the misspelling. Drop. That's all. No, except the condemned man ate a hearty dinner. Oh, uh, mock turtle soup, chicken pot pie, hash brown potatoes, combination salad and pie, a la mode. The doomed man ate a hearty meal as follows. Noodle soup, roast the beef, sweeter potato, cranberry sauce, strawberry pie, and a great big hunk of pastrami. Statement from who? The sheriff? Quote him for anything you want. He can't read. Kruger calling. Nothing new on the hanging. And say, Jake, get this in for me as a big favor, will you? 
The whole meal was furnished by Charlie Apfel, who, uh, Apfel, no, a, a for adenoids, P for psychology, F for phenomenon, E for epilepsy, and L for, uh, 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 L for, uh, Lay an egg. Certainly, this is Betsy to talking. The proprietor of Apple wants to see you. Restaurant. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jamie, Jamie. Stinky Bensinger's going in for petty graft again. That means a new hat for somebody. I understand that's how Bensinger gets all his clothes. Sure, the greasy spoon gave him that overcoat when George Kidd Q chorus won. <laughs> <laughs> if they ever stop hanging people, they'll probably go naked. Why don't you make a poem out of it, Roy? Hello, Molly. Uh-oh, there's a gleam in her eye. Don't look at me, baby. I didn't say a word. Hello, kid. How's the old kind again? Jordan, how are you, Molly? I've been looking for you, tramp. Get those who swallow those, you just send, Earl. What do you want done with them tomorrow morning? A lot of wise guys, ain't you? What do you want in here? To tell you what I think of you. All of you. Keep your skirts on. If you was worth breaking my fingernails on, I'd tear your face wide open. What's the matter? What are you sore about, sweetheart? Wasn't that a swell story we gave you? Yeah. You crumbs have been making a fool out of me long enough. She oughtn't to be allowed in here. Yesterday, I caught her using the drinking cup. I never said I loved Earl Williams and was willing to marry him on the gallows. You made that up about my being his soulmate and having a love nest with him. You've been sucking around that cuckoo ever since he's been in the death house. Everybody knows you're his affinity. That's a rotten lie. I met Mr. Williams just once in my life. He was wandering around in the rain without his hat and coat on like a sick dog the day before the shooting. I went up to him like any human being would. Asked him what was the matter. He told me about being fired after working at the same place for 14 years. I took him up to my room because it was warm there. <laughs> Put that on your Victrola. Just because you want to fill your lying papers with a lot of dirty scandal, you got to crucify him. Make a tramp out of me. Got a match? I tell you, he just sat there talking to me all night. Never once laid a hand on me. Uh-oh. In the morning, he went away. And I never saw him again. To that day at the trial. Tell us what you told the jury. <laughs> Go on, laugh. I'd like to know some curses bad enough for your greasy souls. Sure, I was his witness, the only one he had. Witness? Yes, me, Molly Malloy, a common streetwalker. The only one with guts enough to stand up for him. That's why you're persecuting me, because he treated me decent, not like an animal, and I said so. When do you dance, kid? This is the press room. We're busy. Why don't you go and see your boyfriend? Better hurry. He's left a call for 7 a.m. It's a wonder a bolt of lightning don't come down and strike you all dead. What was that? They're fixing up a pain in the neck for your boyfriend. <gasps> oh, what's the idea? <laughs> oh, now, now. Don't get hysterical. Oh, shame on you. Why, I didn't say anything. A poor, crazy little guy that never did anybody any harm. Sitting out there alone this minute with the angel of death beside him. And you, Cracker Joe! Say, listen, if you don't shut up, I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, keep your dirty hands off of me. On, outside, you Sam, outside, outside. Get away outside. from me, will you? Get Thank you for this with your greasy soul. You guys want to play some more poker? Uh. Here now, tickets for the hanging. Two for each paper. What do you mean, two? What do you want to do, take your family? Uh, hey, listen, Pete. The I... boss wants a couple for the advertising department. I promised to pay This it ain't a... the Follies, you know. Oh. Big-hearted Pinky. I'm getting tired of your editors using these tickets to get advertising accounts. You've got a lot of nerve. Everybody knows you use them to get in socially. Yeah, you had the whole Union League plug over at the last hanging. Trying to suck in with the swells, huh? I suppose you'll wear a monocle tomorrow morning. Now, boys, that ain't the way to talk. If any of you want a couple of extra tickets, I... I'll be more than glad to take care of you. But for goodness sake, don't 
Sheriff. Hiya, boys. We cleaned up. Here, here, here. Get that copy of the Morning Post out of there. Johnson, what do you mean by throwing things out of the window? Answer me. Who do you think you are? Who wants to know? Do you think that your world of burns are running this town? Well, I'm going to send a bill to the Post tomorrow for all the wreckage committed around here in the last year. Now, how do you like that? That's swell. You know what else you can do? What? Get. <laughs> you stick your nose in this building tomorrow, I'll have you arrested. Well, that's almost worth staying for. And I'll tell you something else, and you can pass it on to Walter Burns. The Post get no tickets for this hanging on account of the lies that they've been printing. Say, listen, you pot roast. If I want to go to your hanging, I'll go. See, and I'll sit in the back. Oh, no, you won't. I only have to tell half of what I know. You don't know anything. I have to know who occupied room 602 at a certain hotel the night before the last hanging. Oh, <laughs> that hotel crack just doubled them up. <clears throat> Say, Sheriff. Press room. Tell me. Just what hotel was that? For you, Sheriff. <laughs> Sheriff Hartman talking. Oh, hello, dear. Must be Irma. No, I can't come home. I got too many things to do first. Getting ready for the hanging. Why don't you take him out to your house and hang him? I'll call you later, Irma. It is Irma. I got to see an alien. No, alienist. Not for me, for William. <laughs> Press room. Who? Oh. Hey, Hildy, your girl. Hello, Mr. Q. Hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? Yay, sandwiches. How about my plain letters? Hamburger for me. I ought to did I? You did not. This way it wasn't shoes. Why, darling, what's the matter? I distinctly said gluten. But listen, sweetheart, I just dropped in to say goodbye to the fellas. Do you remember I told you? Say, will you guys talk or something? Oh, oh, no, man, man. Don't bother about them. Yes, I got a taxi waiting. Hey, go easy on that ketchup. I'm responsible for it. Listen, dear, I got the tickets right in my pocket. Well, now, listen, honey, if you talk like that, I'm going to go right out and jump in the lake. I swear I will, because I can't stand it. Listen. We're listening. I love you. I said I love you. Oh, give him a break, Ernie. Well, that's more like it. Feel better now? Well, smile. And say something. Well, you know what I want to hear. Come on, tell me you love me. Well, come on, tell me you love me. Tell them you love them and we'll all go to sleep. That's the stuff. Yep. Listen, dear, will you wear that little blue straw hat? Wait a minute, I'll see. Are you happy now? I'll bet you're not as happy as I am. Well, I'll bet you anything you want. All right, Don, I'll be there in five minutes. Really, this time. Bye-bye. Hildy, here's Walter again. Tell him to give us a rent, will you? Now, you're just making a nuisance out of yourself. What's the idea of calling up all the time? No, I'm through with newspapers. Well, who cares what you're thinking of me? I'm going to New York tonight, right now, this minute. No, you... Hey, 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 you going, Screwy? Hey, Pinky! Stick that among your souvenirs. Hey, Hildy, you'll get us in an awful jam. Now, listen, if Walter calls up again, tell him to put it in writing. And send it to Hildebrand Johnson, Waterbury Adams Corporation, 735 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Please, Sheriff. Huh? Please. Oh, excuse me, Professor. <laughs> I ain't afraid to die. I ain't afraid. Don't work too much the first day, kid. <laughs> Goodbye, Johnson. I'll drop your line, Hilly, and let you know what Walter says. So long, Hilly. Be careful of that treacherous New York weather, Hilly. So long, Tramp. Don't forget to send us a postal card. Don't forget to drop in and see us if you ever come back, kid. Well, we see you again, Hilly. Riding in a Rolls Royce, giving out interviews on successy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now, we shall reenact the crime. Have you a gun, Sheriff? Huh? A gun. Hmm.
think that I am the policeman. You understand? I am the policeman. Now, where exactly did you stand? Show me. Hey, Hildy, I hope you got a return trip ticket. You'll be back next week. And then what did you do? Dementia free cooks. Goodbye, you wage slaves. When you're calling up fire escapes, getting kicked out of front doors, eating Christmas dinners and one-armed joints, don't forget your old pal, Hildy Johnson. As the road beyond unfolds, Did the jail break? Hey, did you call me? What's the matter? What's happened? Look out where you're aiming, will you? Watch the gate. Stop the crime to get. Who got away? Who was it? Well, we did. Well, we Hurry up. This is important. Give me the desk. Jail break. Call your back. Okay. Call your back. I don't know yet. Look out. Williams just went over the wall. Look out. Waller, quick! Hello, Waller. Hilly, get this. Earl Williams just landed out of the county jail. Yep, yep, yep. Don't worry, Waller, I'm on the job right. Any shot? No, no, I tell you, no one knows where he got the gun. He ran up eight flights of stairs in the infirmary, got out through the skylight. He must have slid down the rain pipe to the street. Murphy, give me the desk. Uh, no, no one knows where he got it. Call you back. No clue yet to Earl Williams' whereabouts. The Crime Commission is offering $10,000 reward for the capture of Earl Williams. Call you back. Hello. Here's a feature for you. Tear bomb. Yeah, tear bomb. Criminals cry for it. If the mayor wants me, he knows where I am. This bomb went off accidentally in the hands of Sheriff Hartman's bombing squad. What went off? The following deputy sheriffs were taken to the emergency hospital. Oh, fine, tell where the friends you are. Benny J. Glazer. That's all I've done for you. Herman Wallstein. Well, things like that in the paper. Sidney Matsburg. That's gratitude for you. Danny Coo. Kruger calling. McHugh, give me the desk. A man answering Williams' description was seen boarding a southbound Cottage Grove Avenue car by motorman Julius A. Lindbergh. Side lights on the manhunt. Yeah, Lindbergh. I thought it'd make a nice feature on account of the name. Mrs. Richard Watts, Jr., age 55, scrub lady. While at work scrubbing the eighth floor of the Commerce Building, was shot in the left leg by one of Sheriff Hartman's special deputies. Uh, right, right <laughs> after it. Another scrub, lady. And he's still getting the hell he got out. All I can get the sheriff, let him out so he can vote for him. Where do you suppose Williams got that gun? Give me Walter Burns, quick. Hello, Walter. Hildy. I just got the whole story from Jacoby. Exclusive? Right, and it's a pip. Only get this, it cost me 260 bucks, see? Don't waste time. Give me the story. All right, I'm telling you. First, I had to give Jacoby all the money I had on me, and it wasn't exactly mine, and I want it back. How'd you get the gun? Did you hear what I said about the money? Yes, now go on. All right. Boy, it's the jailbreak of your dreams. This profound thinker from Vienna decided to make Williams reenact the crime. Well, well, well. Well, I'm coming to it, will you shut up? Of course, he had to have a gun to reenact it with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Who? Peter B. Hartman, B for brains. No, I'm not kidding. The sheriff gave his gun to the professor. The professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the belly. The professor's in the hospital. Williams has evaporated, and the sheriff's gone nuts. <laughs> Ain't it perfect? <laughs> Fine work, Hildy. Save the violets. I want that money, 260 bucks. No, I tell you, I'm not going to cover anything else. I'm going away. Listen, that's the money I got to get married on. 
I just did this as a personal favor. I gave Jacoby all the money I had on me, and I want it back. Well, when will you send it over? <laughs> right away, Hildy. Tell him to hurry, and I'll wait for him here, right. Hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? What was that? Oh, I was just telling Walter I was through, that's all. You haven't done something foolish with our money. Oh, no. Then I think I better take care of it from now oh, on. Oh, now, listen, sweetheart, everything's going to be perfectly all right. Then you haven't got it. Well, no, not right now, but he's going to send it over. Walter, I mean. The boy will be here any minute. Walter, oh, Hildy. Oh, listen, sweetheart, I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. But look, this is what happened. I, oh, was... I know. Well, I can't tell you if you won't listen. I had to give Jacoby the money so he wouldn't give the story to the other papers. Every time I wanted you for something, my birthday, New Year's Eve, and I waited up until 5 in the morning. Well, I know, but a big story broke. It's always a big story. The biggest story in the world. And the next day, everybody's forgotten it, even you. Oh, what do you mean, forgotten? That was the Clara Hammond murder on your birthday. Oh, for heaven's sake, honey, it won't hurt to wait just a few minutes, and the boy's on his way with the money now. Mother's downstairs in a taxi cab. I'm just ashamed to face her. If she knew about that money, it's all we've got in the world, Hildy. We haven't even got a place to sleep except the train. Listen, honey, I'll tell you what we'll do. You and Mother go and have the baggage checked. They're the tickets. You mean you're not coming? Well, yes, I'm coming. I'll meet you at the information booth. It's all that Walter Byrne. You simply can't resist him. Him? I wouldn't raise a finger if he was dying. McHugh talking. Oh, hello, Mac. Dear, this is Mr. McHugh. Mac, this is my girl. Pleased to meet you. Here's a feature on the manhunt that I'll knock you right on you. Excuse me, miss. Wait a second. Mrs. Phoebe DeWolf, 861 and a half South Euclid Street, colored. Well, she became the mother of a piccaninny in a patrol wagon with Sheriff Hartman's rifle squad acting as nurses. <laughs> oh, you should have seen them, miss. I want to put our things in the car, dear. <laughs> well, Phoebe was walking along the street when all of a sudden she began... Right. So the police coaxed her into the patrol wagon and started a race with the store. When the baby was born, they examined him carefully to see if it was Earl Williams, who they knew was hiding somewhere. <laughs> they named the baby Peter Hartman DeWolf in honor of the sheriff. <laughs> and they all pitched in a dollar apiece on account of it being the first baby ever born on a manhunt. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's the mayor himself. Maybe there's a statement. Don't pester me now, please. I have a lot on my mind. His honor won't say anything. Have you seen Sheriff Hartman? No. What a fix this jailbreak gonna have on the colored voters? Not tonight. In what way can an unavoidable misfortune of this sort influence the duty of every citizen, colored or otherwise? Ah, oh, Your Honor. Tell me, is there a red menace or ain't there? Hartman, I've been looking for you. So what we? What's the dope, Pinky? Who engineered this getaway? Well, just a minute, fellas. We got him located. Williams, where? Where he used to live. The rifle squad just starting out. You can catch him if you hurry. Hey! I want to talk to you. I ain't got time for it, honest. I'll, I'll see you after. Hey! Did you actually give Williams that gun? Well, the professor asked me for it. I thought it was for something scientific. Hey! Uh... Kruger calling. Here's a red-hot statement from the governor. The governor claims the mayor and the sheriff have shown themselves to be a couple of eight-year-olds playing with fire. Quote him as follows. It's a lucky thing for the city that next Tuesday is election day, as the citizens will thus be saved the expense of impeaching the mayor and the sheriff. That's all. Hi, Your Honor. Pete. I've got a mighty unpleasant task to perform. Fred, you're just going to get me racked. I've already sworn in 400 deputies. Do you want to bankrupt this administration? But I'm getting for only $12 a night. $12 for those romantic uncles of yours? Out there shooting up everybody they can see for the fun of it? But, Fred... Pete, you're through. Now, don't appeal to my sentimental side. I don't know what to say, Fred. A thing of this kind almost ruins a man's faith in human nature. Fate! And our families, Fred. 
I've always looked on Bessie as my own sister. If there was any way out. But there is a way out. Uh, just give me a couple hours, will you? Hello? Four hundred suppers? Nothing doing. This is a manhunt, not a banquet. That twelve dollars covers everything. That gives you an idea what I'm up against. We're up against a lot more than that with that nutty slogan you invented. Reform the Reds with a rope. There ain't any Reds and you knew it. Well, why go into that now, Fred? The slogan I had was all we needed to win. Keep King George out of our city. Is Sheriff Hartman in there? It's for me. I'm Sheriff Hartman. You looking for me? You certainly are a hard man to find. Huh? I've been... What do you want? I'm a messenger at the State House. This is from the governor. What's from the governor? Uh, the reprieve for Earl Williams. For whom? Earl Williams, uh, the reprieve. And the governor gave me his word of honor that he wouldn't interfere two days ago. And you fell for it. Pete, it frightens me what I'd like to do to you. His name. He's gone. Is there anybody here for me, wooden shoes? No, Mr. Johnson. Oh, that double-crossing louse? No, now, it's all right. Don't, don't worry. Uh, we just want to ask you a couple of questions. The trouble is nobody's using the right psychology of... You got 260 bucks? No, sir. But I got a way of making it. And more. Searchez la femme. What? Who is it that's been defending Williams? Hanging around him. Oh, I ain't got time for that drip. I got to get 260 bucks in the next five minutes. It'll take longer than five minutes to get it. I know where Williams is. Sure, he's out getting his head blown off with a rifle squad, but that don't get me my dough. He's with that girl, Molly Malloy. That's where... Ah, I... shut up! Remember? You never delivered this. You got caught in the traffic or something. Now, don't, don't let anybody see you. Yeah, but how am I gonna know? Come and see me at my office tomorrow. What's your name? Pincus. All right, Mr. Pincus. All you got to do is to lay low and keep your mouth shut. Here. You go to this address. It's a nice, homey little place, and uh, you can get anything you want. Tell him Fred sent you. Okay, Fred. Can you imagine wooden shoes? This time or more, I'd have been a gentleman. I'll ask Louie if you got the dough. Huh? She sent him a lot of roses, didn't she? Yeah. Stick your roses. Come on, Louie. Give me the dough. I'm in a hurry. I'll bet you I'm right. Oh, you... No, not you. Hey, what are you talking about? Did Walter sent you over here? Sure. In case you need any help. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the 260 bucks. What the 260 bucks? The money I spent on the story. Walter promised to send somebody over here, but I can't wait, so... So, so what? You always got a lot of dough on you, Louie. Oh, so you want from me, eh? Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's a lot of money, you know what I mean? Listen, Louie, my whole future's dependent on this. My girl's waiting at the train. We're going to New York tonight. I've only got 15 minutes. If you promise to give me this, Louie, I swear that look, I'll... Look, look, look. What he's going to give to me the works, he'll leave if I help you turn out on him. No, he knows I'm going. He gave me permission. I just did him a swell favor and we're pals again. Oh, yes? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'm going to take the chance. Ah, uh, that's the stuff. I'll write you a note. You can give it a war and get the dough. You're a white man, Louie. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 150 bucks for the dead. Hey, wait a minute. That's taking advantage. Well, it's the best of what I can do. I lose almost 100 bucks that way. That's 110 you lose. Hey, Louie, give me 200, will you? 150. All right, give me the dough. Hey, look, what he says on there? Read it, you mug. Oh, shoot, sure, that's all right. <laughs> well, goodbye and good luck. Oh, I'm going to look you up in New York if there's anything wrong with this. You know what I mean? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. 10, 20, 30, 35, 10, 20, 30, 40, 10, 20.
No, the only way I get out of this place, honey. Huh? They're after me with searchlights. Put down that gun. It ain't loaded. I fired all the bullets already. I surrender. I couldn't hang on that roof any longer. I ain't afraid to die. I was telling a man that when he handed me the gun, waking me up in the middle of the night, talking to me about things he don't understand, calling me a Bolshevik. I'm an anarchist. It's got nothing to do with bombs. It's the philosophy that guarantees every man's freedom. And all those poor people being crushed by the system. And the boys, the boys that were killed in the war and in the slums, all of those slaves to a crust of bread. I can hear them crying. Shut up a second, will you? Go on. Take me and hang me. I've done my best. Give me water, Burns, quick. Right. Hello. Oh, hello, Peggy. Listen, have a heart. Something terrific has happened. Hold the line a minute, will you, dear? Hello, Walter. Hildy, come over here right away. Yeah, wait a minute. Listen, Peggy, dear. Oh, please, don't start to bone me out now in a terrible jam. Hold the line, dear. Walter, get this. I can only say this once. I just captured Earl Williams. Yeah, here in the press room. What? Honest to... Come over here right away. I need you. Now, listen, dear. Please, don't start to cry or I can't tell you. Get this. I just captured Earl Williams, the murderer. Yeah. Please don't tell anybody. Well, I know, honey, but I can't. Listen, well, don't you realize, honey? Please, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. Dear, listen, honey, please. What? Now, wait a minute, Molly. They got him surrounded someplace. Gonna shoot him like a dog. Get out of here, Molly. If you're smart, so get out of here. They're looking for you, too. Tell me where they've gone. I ain't afraid of them, the yellow murderers. Lincoln, look at them first. Oh. No for... Shh. Who is it? Me. I got a clue. Be right with you, wouldn't you? Get back in there. What is it? Double cross. I'm trying to save him. This is very important. Scott. Keep him quiet and I'll get rid of him. Hello, wooden shoes. Thank you for the roses, Molly. How'd you get here? I came down the rain pipe. I didn't mean to shoot him. I don't know what happened. But you can't stay here. They'll get you. I don't care anymore. You gotta hide. You rat. No, don't do anything. I'm ready to go. I don't care. It's better to die for a cause than the way most people die for no reason. Why, you won't die. They'll never get you. I ain't important. It's humanity that's important. Like I told you, Molly, humanity is a wonderful thing. No, it ain't. They're just dirty murderers. Look what they've done to you and to me. That's, that's because they don't know any better. You're too good for him, that's why. You're good, too. Me? Yeah. I think you're wonderful. I made out a statement today and left it with the warden so that when I was dead, people would understand what I meant. There was a lot about you in it. I said, you were the most beautiful character I ever met. Yeah? So this is the time for you to print my theory of crime prevention. Okay, you run along and write it out for me. And hurry up, will you? Get back in there. The fellas are coming. It's a find them. There's no place else. Shh. You lock the door. Coming, Mike. He's got to get back in there. Oh. Give us an idea. Don't oh, get in this desk. What's going on in there? What could it do? Job in ten minutes. Open up in there, will you? All right, all right. Go on, please. They'll find me anyway. I'm coming. Keep quiet. Don't even breathe. I'll be right here. I won't leave you. Hey. Now, what are you trying to do? Kick down the building? Kind of exclusive, ain't you? Molly. Oh, I beg your pardon. City desk. What's the idea of locking the door? I was interviewing her. The desk. What was he doing to it? With the vines, though. Oh, well, you fellas don't understand. You still are here? Boy, it's some Halloween going on out there. They got the whole police department standing in the rear. Hello, Murphy calling. Give me the desk. Any news? I was never so tired in my life. 
They surrounded the house, but Williams wasn't there. No luck on Williams yet. Call you back. Oh, what a chase. You miss your train? Kroger calling. I'm out with Sheriff Hartman's deputy. Yeah, I'm in a drugstore. Well, call me back if you don't believe me. Come on, come on, operator. Fitzroy, 2500. Molly, can't you flop somewhere else? Mmm, smell. Mmm. Floor de floozy. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me passionate. Look out, she'll start bawling again. Why don't you let her alone? Say, when did you two get so chummy? Told us he was interviewing her. Are you back in the job again? Uh, Hello, Sarge. McHugh. Anything doing? You still here? I'm trying to hang something on us, if you ask me. I'm waiting for Waller. Now to send a guy over with some dough. Hey, this looks good. An old lady just phoned the detective bureau and claims Earl Williams is hiding under her piazza. Tell her to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, just the same, fellas. That sounds like a pretty good tip. Shall we go out after it? Oh. Yeah. Say, I'll cover this end for you. Don't let's do any more going out. Who pulled the shades down? Molly likes it that way. Hey, I got a hunch Williams ain't any place they've been looking for him. He might be right here in this building. Sure, hanging around like a duck in a shooting gallery, I suppose. Bright guy. Now, there's the skylight he got out of. But how could he get from there to the ground? I'm pretending there ain't no Earl Williams. Look, he could have jumped over to this roof. That's only about four feet. Yeah, once he got on this roof, he could slide down the rain pipe and come in any of the windows on this side. Well, if the story's going to walk right in the window... Well, the mastermind's at work. Why don't all you guys go home? Williams will probably call on you. Well, there must be something in what Ed says. Well, they'd certainly have nabbed Williams by now. The whole city's inside out looking for him. Well, if he came in this building, it's a cinch he's still here. There hasn't been a chance for a flea to get through those cops downstairs, unless it's one that fell off of the sheriff. What's happened? Oh, you still here, Johnson? <laughs> I thought you were going to New York. Is this the only place you can find to sit in? This chair and this desk are my property, and I'm not going to have anybody using them. Anybody. What are you looking for, Roy? I forgot my aspirin. Oh, you don't want to use aspirin. It's bad for your heart. Is it really? Yes. You know, I felt little palpitations around here every time I... What's I'd the matter, Roy? You're sick? Sick? Say, if I haven't got the grip coming on, I miss my guess. Get some tonsilline. Tonsilline? Yep. Never heard of it. Is it any good? Oh, it's great. It broke up my call in five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes. What's the name? Tonsilline. T for taffy, O for ox, and N for nuts. Get the tonsilline. I know how to spell it. Any drugstore? Any drugstore. I'll get me some. <gasps> that drinking cup. Water get here. In my dough. Hey, speaking about dough, there's a ten grand reward for this guy, Williams. Let's get the cops and search the building. What do you say? Wouldn't it be funny if we found him right here in the building? Well, supposing he is here in the building, the cops will grab the reward. We wouldn't get a smell. That's right. I'll tell you, we'll all grab a floor. Whoever gets him, we'll split the reward. I'll stay here. I don't know about that. Getting my sunset blown off. Well, what else is it good for? Besides, he can't hurt anybody. Oh, come on, Mac. Well. Hello, Mother. Don't you mother me. If you've got anything to say for yourself, after keeping us at that station all this time, you come downstairs and say it to Peggy. Tell Peggy I'll be there in five minutes. No, sir. I don't move out of here without you. But I already told Peggy Oh, that... I know. Something of gibberish about a murderer. No, I... I don't care if you did catch him. You come with me this minute. I knew something stunk around here. Who says he caught him? What do you mean he caught a murderer? I don't know what she's talking about. I didn't say anything of the yes, kind. Yes, you did. He never told her that. No, I said I was trying to save him. You see, Mother, you got it all balled up. What do you know about it? How do you know he did? Let's go! Hilly and she were here together. Yeah. She's the one that knows. What do you mean? Saché Le Femme. Where's Earl Williams? How should I know? Where is he? Give me hold another. Come clean before we knock it out of you. Suck it, Jimmy. Who are you trying to cross? Wait, you stupidgeons. He doesn't know where Williams is. I'm the one that knows. What do you mean you know? Go find out, you heels. You don't think I'm going to tell? We'll make you. Let her alone. She's goofy. She ain't too goofy to know where Williams is. Look out! Close the door. No, you're not getting out of here. Now, where is he? Where are you hiding? 
I ain't gonna squeal. I ain't gonna. You gotta tell her. We'll shake it out of you. Wanna have us call the cops and give you the boots? Come on, wouldn't you? Slap it out of her. Where is he? Before I hurt you. Don't you come near me, you kidney butt. Keep away. Keep away from me. I'll knock your heads off. Put down that chair. Get around. Get on the side of her. No, you don't. You'll never get it out of me. I'll never tell. Never. Grab her. Wooden shoes. Come on, fellas. What is it? Oh, gee, the poor kid. What happened? Fell out of window. Really? Give her air. It's water. Did you see that? Yes. Where is he? She jumped out the window. I know. Where is he? I said. Anyway, she ain't dead. Come to, Hildy. Where have you got Williams? Huh? He's in the desk. Oh, the poor kid. Let me out. I can't stand it. Keep quiet. You're sitting pretty. What's the matter? That. That's my girl's mother. What are you doing? Shut up. I won't shut up. That girl killed herself. You're doing something wrong. What's in there? Louis, take this lady over to Polak Mike's and lock her up. And see that she doesn't talk to anyone on the way. What's that? What's that? Take her out the back way. Tell Mike it's a case of delirium treatment. Listen, Walter, this will get me in a terrible jam. Oh, shoot. Anything you say, boss. Now, don't worry, mother. This is only temporary. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to get my girl. Your girl. What are you, some puling college boy? Why, in time of war, you could be shot for what you're doing for less. Screw, there's your story. Smeared all over the front page. Earl Williams caught by the morning post and take all the credit. I covered your story and I covered it right. Now I'm getting out of here. Why, you drooling sap head, what do you mean a story? You've got the whole city by the seat of the pan. I know, but... You know, you've got the brain of a pancake. Listen, Hildy, if I didn't have your interest at heart, would I be wasting time arguing with you now? You've done something big. You stepped into a new class. What? Why, we'll make such monkeys out of those war dealers that nobody will vote for them, not even their wives. Expose them, huh? Crucify them. We're going to keep Williams under cover till morning so the Post can break the story exclusive. Then we'll let the governor and the captain share the glory with him. I see, I see. You've kicked over the whole city hall like an apple cart. You've got the mayor and Hartman back against the wall. You put one administration out and another one in. Well, this isn't a newspaper story, it's a career. And you stand there belly aching about some girl. Well, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it that way, I guess. We were the white haired boys, don't we? Why, they be naming streets after you. Johnson Street. You and I and the governor are going to run this town. I know, we can't keep Williams here. One of the fellows... I'm take him over to my private office, which is our phone. That one, how are you going to take him? They'll see him. Not if he's inside the desk and carry it over. Can't do that. A swarm of cops outside. We'll lower out of the window and pull it. Hildy. What? Snap into it. Grab that machine and start finding out. How much do you want it? All the words you got. Where's the paper? Get it up. Hello. Can I call the mayor down to the bay? Call him up, child, if you want. Tell me. How about the time he had his house painted by the flame? Give him the works. Hello, Duffy. Get set. We've got the biggest story in the world. Earl Williams caught by the post exclusive. Send word down to Butch McGurk. I want ten huskies to lamb right over here. Press room, criminal court building. Butch will get that desk out. Nothing's ever stopped those boys. Well, they start shooting. Fine. Now listen, Duffy. I want you to tear out the whole front page. That's what I said. The whole front page. Out. Johnson's running the lead. Hildy. What the devil do you want? Hildy. Stick the Chinese earthquake. Miss, you can't come in here. Wait a minute, Duffy. Now look here, little girl. You're doing this to him. He was going and you stopped him. Now listen, dear, something terrific has happened. I was going to tell you, but I couldn't. You'll tell her nothing. She's a woman, you fool. I'm not going to let you do it. Holy jumping. Darling, this is the biggest chance of my life. Keep quiet. You don't want to marry me, that's all. That isn't true. Just because you won't listen to me, you say I don't love you. When you know I cut off my hands for you, I'd do anything in the world for you, anything. Jump the League of Nations. Spike it. You never intended to be decent and live like a human being. You were lying all the time. Well, all right, there, that's what you think. Hey, Sebastian, jumping, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, I see what you are now. Just a bum, like him. Sure, that's what I am. No, leave the rooster story alone. That's human interest. You're just a heartless, selfish animal without any feelings. It's all your fault. And if you Shut up, will you? Let me talk to Butch. Sure, that's what I am, a bum without any feelings, and that's all I ever want to be. Then get hold of Butch as fast as you can. You never did love me. Oh, you couldn't talk to me that way. You want me? You'll have to take me as I am instead of trying to make a floozy out of me. I'm no stuffed shirt writing peanut ads. I'm a newspaper man. There, come get that. Get back in there, you mock turtle. Hello, Duffy. The edition going in yet? Well, don't. Never mind the mail trains. You're not working for the advertising department. Keep on this wire. Oh, nuts. Stay on this phone. 
Sheriff Hartman's paid gunmen stalked through the city shooting innocent bystanders, spreading their reign of terror. Earl Williams was lurking less than 20 yards no, from the sheriff's... That stinks. Aren't you going to mention the post? Don't we take any credit? I got that in the second paragraph. Who's going to read the second paragraph? Fifteen years I've been telling you how to write a newspaper story. Have I got to do everything? Get the story? Write the story? Now listen, you crazy baboon. I can sneeze better newspaper stories than you can write. You ought to be back chasing pictures. You were good at that. Well, you ungrateful windbag. Who wrote the Fitzgerald confession? Who wrote the Ruth Randall diary? How about the Dayton flood? Even the telegraph operator was crying. Make me cry now. Duffy, what's the name of that religious editor of ours? The fellow with the dirty collar. Sipper what? Well, tell Sipperly I want to see him right away. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Talk yourself to death. Yeah. I'm going to get Sipperly to make up a prayer for our fair city in eight column, old English bold face, right across the top of the paper. Our father. There were 421 murders in this our fair city last year. All in religious lingo, see? Our Father. What a prayer. What an idea. Mm -hmm. You better pray that desk will float over to your office. Wait. Wait, wait. I've got an inspiration. Here's your lead. Now take this down just as I say it. Someday you're going to do that and they're going to belt you right in the jaw. The Post again wrote to the rescue of the city last night in the darkest hour of her history. Earl Williams. Earl Wilson, from the Bolshevik tiger leech, snarling from the gallows upon the flanks of the city, was captured. I got you, I got you. Go on from there. Who's that? Who's that? What's the idea of locking this door? That's Benzinger, that's his desk. What's his name? Benzinger, the Tribune. I'll handle him, the Tribune, eh? Come on, come on, come on, come on. What's the idea of locking that door? Haven't you any better sense? This isn't a private office, and you ought to know better. Oh, Mr. Burns. Oh, ho. my, it's quite an honor having you over here. Hello, Benzinger. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, please, I just want to get... Quite one. a coincidence, my running into you tonight, isn't it, Hildy? Yeah. Well, how do you mean? I was just having a little chat about you this afternoon. That's nice. Uh, with our Mr. Duffy. Oh, really? Uh, nothing detrimental, I hope. Well, I should say not. Say, that was one swell story you had in the paper this morning. Oh, did you like that, Mr. Burns? Well, <laughs> did you like the poem? The poem? Uh, the poem was great, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Especially that ending. And all is well outside his cell, but in his heart he hears the hangman calling and the gallows falling in his white-haired mother's tears. Heartbreaking, isn't it? How would you like to work for me? Well, <clears throat> what? We need somebody like you. All we've got over there now are a lot of low brows and leg men like Johnson here. <laughs> are you serious, Mr. Burns? My dear Bensinger. Duffy, I'm sending Bensinger over to see you. Uh, Mervyn, isn't it? Roy. Roy V. Of course. Uh, Roy Bensinger, the poet. Put him right on the staff. What are you getting in the Tribune, Roy? Seventy-five. I'll give you a hundred and a byline. Give him everything he wants. Now hustle. Yes, sir. And write me a story from the point of view of the escaped man. He hides, cowering, afraid of every light, of every sound. He hears footsteps, his heart going like that. And all the time, they're closing in. Get the sense of an animal at bay. Uh, uh, sort of a Jack London style. Exactly. Yes, sir. I wonder if you'll excuse me. I just want to get my rhyming dictionary. It doesn't have to rhyme. Oh, of course. Oh, I can't tell you, Mr. Burns, how terribly grateful I am. Yes, sir. Uh, you don't suppose there might be an opening sometime for a foreign correspondent? I'll I keep... probably boo a little French, you know. I'll keep you in mind, Roy. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Au revoir, mon capitaine. Bonjour. <laughs> no. Oh, Jawa. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> White-haired mother's tears. Duffy, get this. A Tribune sneak is coming over to get a job. Bensinger, the fellow I told you about. Tell him to keep busy writing poetry. No, we don't want him. Handle the kid gloves till he gets through. Then tell him his poetry stinks and kick him downstairs. Well, you double-crossing rat. That will teach him not to quit his job without giving notice. Taxi! Taxi! the morning post building, quickly. 
Oh, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Frozen Robin? Oh, you've just jazzed up my whole life. That's what you've done. You ought to have our plan set when Butch gets here. Butch. He'd go through fire for me. Nine horses bustle I turned out to be. No, the window's out. We'll have them carry it out of the building. Gee, she was the most wonderful girl I'll ever know. She had looks, brains, spirit, everything. Who are you talking about? My girl. What do you think? Mumbling about your girl now? You've got a story to write. Practically chased her out like she was some pickup. You acted like a man for the first time in your life. I'll never love anybody else. They don't come twice like that in a man's life. You'll sleep it off. Gee, when she was sick in the hospital and you sent me on that wild goose chase all over Kentucky, she never even complained. <laughs> sick in the hospital. Well, she was. She nearly died. I see. She never complained. She just nearly died. Gee, this time tomorrow, I'd have on the train. On my way to New York. Hildy. I was in love once with my third wife. I treated her white, let her have a maid and everything. I was sweet to her. Who wants to hear about your wife? I trusted her. Then I let her meet a certain party on the Tribune, and what happened? One night I came home unexpectedly. I let myself in through the bedroom window. End of story. I don't want to hear about your troubles. And the very next morning, what do I find on the Tribune? All over the front page. My attraction story that I've been fool enough to tell my wife. Yeah, you know a lot about women. You do. You and that stable you keep. You never met a decent woman. You wouldn't know what to do with a pure girl. Oh, yes, I would. You take that back! What do you think women are? Flowers? I think that dame that shot the dentist. And Mrs. Vermilion. Husband comes home all worn out, hungry, takes a spoonful of soup, falls dead. Arsenic. And Mrs. Petrus burning her husband up in the furnace. If you'd been in this business as long as I have, you'd know what women are. Murders. Borges. Boy, I'm a sap falling for your line of... Johnson Street. You've had a good rest. Get back on the story. Here, you're just nervous. Sure, I'll take that. I'll get stewed tonight and I'll stay stewed the rest of my life. I'll be a newspaper man right in your class. Got my bustle in a monkey cage. Shut up, you fathead. Who is it? Hello. Boss. Louis. What's the matter? Where's the old lady? What'd you do with it? What happened? You been in a fight? Down on Western Avenue. We're going 65 miles an hour, you know what I mean? Take that mush out of your Where's mouth. Where's the old lady? I'm a telling you. We ran smack into a police patrol, you know what I mean? We cut him in half. Was she hurt? Tell me, where is she? I am a telling you. Can you imagine a bumping into a lot of cops? They come a running after like the oranges. Well, what'd you do with her? Oh, search me. When I come to, I was running down 35th Street, you know what I mean? Well, you were with her. You were in the cab with her, weren't you? Yeah, was I. The taxi driver, he's got to knock call. Butterfingers, I'll give you an old lady to take somewhere and you hand her over to the cops. Hey, what do you mean I hand? The police patrol was on the wrong side of the street and there you got it. And now everything's fine. She's probably squawking her head off in some police station. I don't think she's talking much. You know what I mean? No, don't tell me. Was she killed? Was she? Did you notice? Say, with that rap what I got against me, and that bank job, and the big blow right here, I should stick around asking the questions from a lot of cops. Oh, sure. Dead. Well, that finishes me. Well, that's fate, Hildy. What will be, will be. Oh, sure. But what am I going to tell Peggy? What am I going to say to her? You'll never see her again. I'll snap out of it. Would you rather have had the old lady bringing the whole police force in here? But I killed her. I did it. What am I going to do? How am I ever going to face her? Look at you. Look at me. I'm looking at you, you murderer. It was my own mother I'd carry on. You know I would. For the paper. Do we whether it happened? Because I'm going out. You wait here. I'll find out if everything's all right. Western and 34th. Hello, hello. Me, hey, Western, 4557. Who? Hello, Butch. Where are you? My mission hospital. Well, what are you doing there? Haven't you even started? Was an old lady brought in there for an honest smash-up? Oh, for H. Sebastian Butch, listen, it's a matter of life and death. Nobody? I can't hear. Who? Speak up. You got what? Well, you can't stop for a dame now. Uh, community hospital? I don't care if you've been trying for six years. Butch, our whole lives are at stake. You're not going to let some round-heeled blonde ruin everything. Eddie, this is Hilly Johnson. Butch. I'd put my arm in fire for you. Up to here. Now, you can't double-cross me. She does. All right, put her on. I'll talk to her. Hello. 
Oh, hello, madam. Now listen, tramp. You can't keep Butch away from his duty. What kind of language is that? Hello. Hello. I'll kill him. I'll kill both of them. Duffy, mousing around with some big blonde nanny when I need him. That's cooperation. Duffy! Shut up, will you? Are you sure nobody? Duffy! Diabetes. I ought to know better than to hire anybody with disease. Louis, hey, hey, it's up to you. Anything you want, boss. Beat it out and get a hold of some guys, will you? What do you want us to get? Anybody with hair on their chest. Get them off the streets, anywhere. Offer them anything, only get them. We got to get that desk out of here. Boss, the shirt off of my back, you know what I mean? Don't bump into anything. I'll be at 2100. That dumb immigrant will flop on me, I know it. Can you imagine Butch laying down at a time like this? Come on, let's go back to the press room. Yeah. Ed, tell him to give us a ring there. Yeah, tell him to ring us at the press room. Ring us at the press room. If we don't get back in five minutes, we'll get it out alone. There are millions away. We'll start a fire, and the fireman can carry it out. The confusion. Bring that number, will you? Come here, see if we can move it. Hello, is this the lying-in hospital? Will you have an auto smash up there in the last? Will you come here? Well, I beg your pardon. When I'm surrounded with my back against the wall, you're not going to lay down on me. I'm going to lay down on you and spit in your eye, you murderer. Yella, huh? I don't care what you think I am. I'm going out and find my girl's mother. Oh. You and Butch McGurk, woman lovers. Don't open that. Here he is. Uh, uh, Just a minute, Johnson. Let go of me. What's the idea? What's your hurry? Wait a minute. We want to see you. Keep your paws off of me, will you? Only mine. Wait a minute, Hartman. Wait a minute. Who do you think you are breaking in here like this? You can't bluff me, Burns. I don't care who you are or what paper you're editor of. Let me go. Well, something's happened to my girl's mother. Hang on to it, boys. We know what you're up to. Probably going out to get Williams. The door was locked. He and Molly were talking. I don't know anything. I tell you, there's been an accident. Johnson, there's something very, very peculiar going on here. Well, you can set somebody out with me if you don't believe me. I wasn't born yesterday. Now, the boys tell me that you and this Molly Malone... Oh, nobody's trying to put anything over on you. I'm going to get out of here and you can't stop me. Wait a minute. You ain't going to get anywhere, Sheriff. He's got the whole story sewed up and that's why... Th that's why Burns is here. We're on here, Heavy. Let us in on it. Uh, if you've any accusations to make, Hartman, make them in the proper manner. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you to get out. You ask me to what? Get out. Close that door. Don't let anybody in or out. Come on, Sheriff. Give him a little third degree. Make him talk, Pinky. You've got William. Johnson, I'm going to the bottom of this. Tell me. What do you know about Williams? Are you going to talk or ain't you? What do I know about Williams? All right, boys, take him along. I got ways to make him talk. Look out, you! What's the use of fighting, Hildy? The guy's got a gun. Hey, Waller! Give me that. Where'd you get this? I'll have to carry a gun if I want it. Not this gun. I can explain that, Hartman. He was having some trouble on the spray case. I gave it to him to defend himself. Oh, you did, eh? Well, that's very, very interesting. This happens to be the gun that Earl Williams shot his way out with. Oh, getting married, huh? Maybe Williams was going to be his best man. That's pretty, Hildy. Crossing your own pound. What do you know about that, eh? Are you trying to make me out a liar? I know my own gun, don't I? Oh, we might have known who'd give Williams a gun. Don't you ever make a mistake? Oh, now we're getting the story. Then Hildy must have gotten that gun from Earl Williams. Where is he? Where do you got him? You're breaking up the wrong tree, Pinky. I'll give you three minutes to tell me where he is. You know, at the hospital, they call on Professor Egelhoff. What? With a bag of marshmallows. Take a magazine along. He ain't there. Say, what about Mr. Burns? Ask the mastermind what he's doing here. 
Speak up, Burns. What do you know about this? My dear heart. Oh, can that. Come on, where is he? The Morning Post is not obstructing justice or aiding criminals. You ought to know that. No? Well... Johnson, you're under arrest. You too, Burns. Who's under arrest, you insignificant pimple head of square toed spy? Do you realize what you're doing? We'll see about that. Carl, get the mayor on the phone. Ask him to come over here. That man there. Tell me, Mother, are you all right? What's the idea here? This lady claims she was kidnapped. What? They dragged me all the way down the stairs. Just a minute, lady. What has this man to do with it? He was the one in charge of everything. He told them to kidnap me. Are you referring to me, madam? You know you did. What about this, Burns? Kidnapping, eh? Well, it's beyond me. Who is this woman? What a thing to say. I was standing right there when the girl jumped out of the window. Did you get the mayor on the phone, Carl? Coming right over. Now, madam, be honest. If you were joyriding, drunk, or got into some scrape, why don't you admit it instead of accusing innocent people? Oh, you ruffian. You unprincipled man. You, you, uh, how dare you say a thing like that? Oh, mother, he's just crazy. I'll tell you something more. I'll tell you why they did it. Come on, Sheriff, we've got to get bail. I was in here. They had some kind of murderer hiding him. Hiding him? In here? Hiding him where? Oh, mother. Where was he? Where they have him? Madam, you're a cock-eyed liar. He's in the desk. Holy crap. For the love of me, give me that. Oh, what a break. I thought so. Stand back, everybody. Look out. He may have a gun. Get your guns out. Oh, he's harmless. Don't take any chances. Shoot right through the desk. Well, he can't hurt anybody. You've got his gun. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Gray-haired old Judas. City desk, quick. Close that door. Give me the desk. Guard those windows. City desk, hurry. You, stand over there. Hey, the job where you're pointing that gun. Give me ammo. Billy, call Duffy. Duffy! No, you don't. Let me have the desk, quick. You want to get it scooped? Now then, everybody. Hold the wire. I got a flash for you. Aim right at the center. That's murder. When I say three... Hang on for a second. Oh, Frank. Hold it. One of you stand each side of the desk. Something coming up. Take hold of the cover. Hold the phone. Now then, we got you covered, Williams. I'll have it in a minute. Ready for an emergency. Right away now. When I say three... Something hot. One. Two. Up with it. Go on. Shoot me. Earl Williams was just captured in the press room of the criminal court's building hiding in the desk. Got you, Williams. Williams found in a roll top. That's Williams hiding. Found Williams hiding place. Williams put up a desperate struggle, but the police overpowered. He offered no resistance. He tried to shoot it out with the cops, but his gun wouldn't work, so... Trying to break through the court and the police. Williams was unconscious when they opened the desk. Hey, Duffy, the post just turned Williams over to the sheriff. More in a minute. Put the cops on those two. Anonymous note received by the sheriff led to Williams' capture. More later. A well-dressed society woman tipped off the cops. Call you back. An old sweetheart of Williams double-crossed him. Following a well-defined trail of blood, the sheriff... Williams gave away his whereabouts when he sent out for food. The sheriff is now tracing a mysterious phone call that gave away Williams' hiding place. Call you back. Where's the old lady? Hey, madam. Where'd she go? Where's the old lady? Hello, girlie. Give me Jacoby, quick. Hartman, you're going to wish you'd never been born. Fine work, Pete. You certainly delivered the goods. I'm proud of you. Well, they're kind of natural, don't they, eh, Fred? A sight for sore eyes. Well, it looks like you boys stepped into something up to your necks. Aiding an escaped criminal. <laughs> and a little charge of kidnapping that I'm looking into. That's the jail. There must be somebody there. Hey! There's the old lady now. Well, it looks like about ten years apiece for you, Burge. Does it? You forget the power that always watches over the morning post. Your luck's not with you now. Jacoby, I caught him. William. Yes, single-handed. They're bringing him right over. We'll proceed with a hanging purse schedule. 
You'll be in office exactly two days more. And we're pulling your noses out of the feed bag. Give me the district attorney's office. I tell you what you'll be doing. Making brooms in the state penitentiary. Hello, Durant. This is Hartman talking. Yeah, I just arrested a couple of important birds. And I want you to take their confession. Dudley, get Clarence Darrow. All the lawyers in the world aren't going to help you. This is the Morning Post you're talking to. The power of the press, yes. huh? <laughs> Bigger men than you have found out what the power of the press means. President. <laughs> yes, and king. Fred, whenever you think you've got the post lick, that's a good time to get out of town. On a hand car. Whistling in the dark, eh? Well, it isn't going to help you this time. You're through. The last man that told me that was Eddie Kane, a week before he cut his throat. And I've got the same feeling right now that I had five minutes before that happened. Here's your reprieve. Get out of here. You can't bribe me. What's all this? Get out of here, you. No, I won't. Here's your reprieve. What? I don't want to be your city stealer. Who is this man? Who is bribing you? They wouldn't take it. You're insane. What did I tell you? The unseen power. What's your name? Irving Finkus. You drunken idiot. Arrest that man. The idea of coming here with a cock and bull story like that. It's a frame up. Some imposter. Hey, wait a minute. Murder, eh? Hanging an innocent man to win an election, huh? It's a lie. I never saw him before. Why, friend. When did you deliver this the first time? Who'd you talk to? They started right in bribing Who's me. Who's they? Them. That's absurd in the face of it, Mr. Burns. He's talking like a child. <laughs> the unseen power. He's insane or drunk or something. Since this unfortunate man, Williams, has really been reprieved, I personally am tickled to death. Aren't you, Pete? Huh? Go on, you'd hang your mother to win an election. That's a horrible thing to say, Johnson, about anybody. Now, look here, Walter. You're an intelligent man. Now, wait a minute. All right, Mr. Pinkus, let's have your story. Well, I've been married for 19 years. Let's skip all I... that. Take those handcuffs off the boys, Pete. That wasn't at all necessary. I was just going to. Well, what are you waiting for? Take the cuffs off the boys. Walter, I can't tell you how badly I feel about this. There was no excuse for Pete to fly off the handle. I was only doing my duty. There wasn't anything personal, man. Why don't you guys quit politics and take in Washington? What did you say your name was? Pinkus? That's right. Here's a picture of my wife. Yeah, fine looking woman. Well, she's good enough for me. Boy, I'll bet she is. Hildy, what's the matter? What are they going to do? Those reporters said that... Oh, Peggy, don't start to pull me out now. Nobody's going to do anything to anybody. Of course not. My old friend Walter Burns and I understand each other perfectly, I trust. And uh, so do I. So do you what, you hoodoo? Now, Mr. Pinkus, if you will come with us, we'll take you over to the warden's office and deliver this reprieve. But, Hildy, they said they'd arrested you. Uh, uh, by the way, Walter, we were going to have a little feed after the hanging. A sort of buffet breakfast. Hartman! <laughs> I'm coming, Fred. What do you say if we eat it now? Delicious ham. And some of Mrs. Hartman's own preserves. Hartman! Oh, dear. Wait till those two future pencil peddlers read the post in the morning. Say, Hilda, get that guy Pinkus over to the office tomorrow. What thing doing? I'm all washed up. What? I mean it this time, Walter. Oh, Hilda, if I only thought you did. Peggy, if I'm not telling the absolute truth, may I fall dead. I'm going to New York with you if you give me this one last chance. I'm going to cut out drinking and swearing and everything connected with that crazy newspaper business. Honey, I won't even read a newspaper. I've got an idea. No. There's nothing you can say will make me change my mind. This time I'm through and I mean it. Peggy, I got a lot of nerve to ask you to marry me. I'm a prize package, all right, but if you'll take me, here I am. Darling, don't talk that way. I want you just the way you are. Gosh, Hildy, I didn't know it was anything like this. Why didn't you say something? You know, I'm the last fellow in the world that would want to come between you and your happiness. You ought to know that. I love you, you crazy mug. You're getting a great guy, Peggy. Never mind the Valentine. Goodbye, you turkey. You're a great newspaper man, Hildy. And I'm sorry to see you go. But if I ever come back to the business, which I won't, there's only one guy I'd work for. You know that, don't you? Why, I'd kill you if you ever worked for anybody else. You hear that, Peggy? 
That's my diploma. Gee, Walter, I don't know what to say, except I'm gonna miss you. Same here, son. Fifteen years we've been knocking around together. That's before you were born, honey. And what jams we've been in. And what excitement we've had. Say, do you remember the time we hid the missing heiress in the sauerkraut factory? Do I? Say, Peggy. Get him to tell you about the time that we stole old Lady Haggerty's stomach from the coroner's physician. We proved she was poisoned. Well, we ought to hide for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. What? You don't want to go to New York. Down deep. Well, I... I was just talking. I, I'd feel worse if I stayed. I guess. If I thought you were going to be unhappy... I mean... If you really wanted to... No. This is your chance to have a home and be a human being, and I'm going to make you take it. Why, I wouldn't let him stay. Go on before I make you city editor. Hurry up, Peggy. He means it. Any objections to my kissing the bride? No, it's okay with me. Go ahead, Mrs. Johnson. Thanks. What time does your train go? There's another 12.40. New York Central, eh? Gee, I wish I had time to buy you a present, but... Wait a minute. I've got it. Oh, no, Walter. Make me feel like I'm the bride. Shut up. It was a present from the big chief. And if you look inside, you'll find a little inscription. To the greatest newspaper man I know. When you get to New York, you can scratch out my name and put yours in its place if you want to. You know I wouldn't do that. Take it, Hildy. Mr. Burns wants you to. You don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, this is the first and last thing I ever got from a newspaper. Goodbye. I've always had a queer opinion of you, Mr. Burns. I still think you're a little peculiar, but you're all right underneath. I mean, I think you're a peach. So are you. You look just like a flower. Goodbye, you big baboon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Johnson. Be good to yourself and the little girl. Same to you and many of them. Duffy, listen, Duffy, what's the first stop of the 1240 to New York? That's right. I want you to send a wire to the chief of police there. Tell him to beat that train and arrest Hildy Johnson. Bring him back here. Wire him a complete description. The son of a stole my watch. <laughs> 